On this Minute of the Apes, Richard sings hits from the 80s. Who can it be now? They greenlit the sequel Without a story in mind They just wanted to equal An unexpected gold mine He said, oh no, as Heston said I got to go These are just some of the facts you ought to know as we go Beneath the minute of the apes Beneath the minute of the apes Beneath the minute of the apes Hello and welcome to Minute of the Apes, the daily podcast. We break down every minute of the Planet of the Ape movies, one minute at a time. Happy Monday. I'm Todd. Guess who I've got across from me? Um, uh, wait. Wait, I know this. I know this answer. How okay. many guesses do we get? Three, <laughs> two. It's Richard and Sean. Hey. hey, hey happy everybody. Monday. Happy Monday. Let's start off Monday as we always do. And this time I'm going to go beyond just thanking the Star Wars Minute guys to say... Let's thank everybody in the Movies by Minute community. There are a ton of them out there. Yep. Uh, I saw one of my least favorite films that <laughs> is an adaptation of one of my favorite Broadway musicals about Rent. The, they're breaking it down. They're kind of comparing it to the two. Now, they love the movie. I don't. But it's okay. still interesting to hear people and why they love it. Got so it. that's why the Movies by Minute thing works so well. As we always say, if you don't see a movie you love, go what? start your own. Yeah. So with that housekeeping out of the way... As Richard opens a beer. Shh. Did you hear that? Yeah, yes, we heard. Oh, well, you guys heard that. I don't know if they, the studio audience heard yeah, that. That or the strangest part of it. Studio audience. They're, they're the <laughs> so we're up, to, we're up to minute 56. Sean, tell us what's going on. All right, we're going to start minute 56 with Brent and Nova walking towards the camera, and it ends with a zoom in on Brent grasping at his face. Now let's take a listen to that zoomy minute. All right, as of minute 56, we have three living humans, four dead humans, one dead ape, a shrewdness of apes, and a gaggle of humans. Uh, so, the water spout. That's just somebody f***ing around with Brent, right? But I was going to ask you what, you what you thought of that. So, yeah, so they're walking towards the giant uh, doors to the St. Patrick's Cathedral. That's I mean, what we're supposed to assume that is, with the nice, clean, bright doors. It's a little crooked. The, you know, the, the shape is a little misshapen to the side, like it's tilted, like it's not yeah, on stable ground. the doors are straight, yeah, oddly. The doors, yeah, the doors... It shouldn't really work if the building itself I, is now crooked. I know that yeah, from my house. Yeah. <laughs> my bathroom yeah. door won't close right now because I, I do, of the yeah, I do settling of the heat. I do believe get somebody to get the foundation settled. Right, but, it, exactly. but it's very odd, and I, they purposely go for it to show that kind of off-kilter look, but it really is weird when you stop and look to think that it didn't all shift with it. And, and, it, and it took well, – we, we complained about it, I think, on the last minute that there was these, these giant clean doors and things like that. But finally he's taking notice of it like, oh – yeah. Maybe I should walk towards these bright wooden, you know, pristine, pristine doors. doors. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but you. Uh oh. We're just playing papers you, around here. Oh, <laughs> power supply. But Sean was about to talk about the water fountain, right? Yeah, I mean, because he's tried to drink twice now and it's gotten stagnant water and all of a sudden fresh water springs up. Well, okay. So you, you, you're watching these one minute at a time. Yep. What I thought you, that too. What do you think is going on with that water fountain? Like, Sean, what do you, what do you like? The water fountain just came on. I mean, honestly, it feels like somebody's dicking around with them. So you think it's still? Uh, I guess. I guess if you we we had been talking about the sound, and he was saying that they were being led to this point. So now we think that they're being directed even more. Yeah. Yeah. With the water fountain coming on. It's I, funny you bring that up because as I watched it, I my first thought was, I wonder what Sean's thinking because you have no idea at this point 
where what, this movie's going. No. Uh, for those of you who might be joining us later in this, and those of Why you who you know. Why would start on episode 56? You never know. <laughs> you know what? I've jumped in before on a few things. In fact, yeah. whenever I did Star Wars Minute, I think I jumped in in the middle just to see what it was like. So if you don't know what we do, I've seen these films countless times. Richard's seen them quite a few times. Sean has never seen them all the way through. No. He has, he knows some of the pop culture beats. He is literally watching these one minute at a time. And I know nothing about the future movies, except for I think there's time travel, reverse time travel somehow involved. So you're watching this, a water fountain comes on, and you can really tell it's pretty crystal clear water too. Right. It doesn't it's look shooting, like shooting that nasty. Really high, real high right. arc up in uh-huh. the air. Like it's, it's not your normal water fountain. No. So, and, and it, was that I your mean, immediate thought? Was there's somebody watching them dicking with them? As a matter of fact, I expected, fully expected for him to get up to drink it and then to turn <laughs> off. Like, nah! It's funny you say that because I, as much as I've seen these, I think I even expected that to happen. I was like, is that water going to turn off? <laughs> oh, no, it keeps going and he drinks from it. What I found really interesting about this moment is they're at the doors, the water comes on, they give them a little bit of pause for them to hear it and react to it. Uh, there's a moment where the water is on, and I think we get like, Two seconds or three seconds before Brent actually like that was oh, odd. What yeah. is that noise? Like he didn't like he didn't hear it immediately that something was because it's dead silent in this this entire this time. cavernous right. thing. Yeah, right. So the water fountain comes on. It would make me jump. I would think if I heard that suddenly. Me too. And I I thought that was a. Li- I, I get why he's supposed to be like what is that? But right. It, but it literally is about a three second pause from yeah. the moment when we hear a loud trickling of water. Right. To when he finally looks and goes. Oh, what, what's that? What I thought was really interesting about this this moment is we've got Nova on the left and Brent on the right with their backs to us and the, with the water kind of fountain in the foreground. And the water spout comes up and outside of that pause, Brent turns and looks at the water fountain. Nova turns, looks at the water fountain because Brent's looking at it, then looks back to Brent. Like she's not registering this water fountain means anything. It was a nice like – She's a savage woman moment. But right. She's not really looking at she, – she sees it, but she's looking at it because she's responding to what Brent's looking at, not because I mean, she, she cares. She's just as thirsty as Brent. She hasn't had any water to drink either. Well, and I know we said this in – I think it was last week's minutes when we were trying to find what shoved them down the the tunnel towards where yeah. they are now. That, that it, That's oh, a loud oh, we, bird. Yeah. I look out there and I think got, we have some crows fighting or something. We have birds right outside the door here at Zeus Comics, and I can see them. They are about to go to blows. Um, so if you heard that squawking, that's that's what it, was. it wasn't Sean fighting with Richard yeah. over there. It was actually birds. <laughs> but last week we talked about that usually when you have somebody go deeper into danger, there's a reason for it. Either there's a pressure behind them or they need water, they need something. At this point, I found myself once again thinking this moment pays off. If they've said we need water, or if Nova's looked at him like you know made some mute sign start, language like, thing that she's thirsty, give them the you know the cracked lips and stuff. Yeah, what so, a, so it's it is kind of odd that neither one of them, even Brent and his, you know, over to the water doesn't seem thirsty. And he's gone. He's ridden a horse for a long way. Yeah, he's been buried in a subterranean area. Well, he would be thirsty. He, he's tried water twice. Yeah, right, and, and spit it out each time. So the fountain comes on. Brent walks over, and he's looking specifically at the water spout or the top of the fountain, Mm -hmm. right? I also find interesting that Savage Woman Nova is just kind of looking at the base of the fountain and looking around the bottom of the fountain and kind of noticing what he's looking at. She really is not reacting to this water fountain coming out. She's reacting to, we're walking back over here, Brent. Okay, cool. What are we walking towards? It was was interesting. So does she maybe... Has she had experience? She's had experience with the apes and what they would do to get them into a cornfield. Therefore, she knows dangers there. Has she had experience like this? Maybe like a water fountain. I mean, if she you look knows, at it, she's looking at the ground. She's looking at the base of it. She's looking yeah. around it while he is continuing to watch the water spout itself. So it was just weird to watch her. Like I'm looking. I don't know what he's. We're looking at something. Let's go over here. What's happening? Well, I'm assuming that all the humans lived out in the wild and didn't live in caves or had ever been to places like this before. And if even if they had, let's say another group of them had gone into something, it's not like they have any method of communication. Therefore, I can't imagine they would even do cave drawings. How would they ever communicate, hey, I went into this area below the ground and, and somebody also, shot water at me? If you're scared of the apes, if you found a place like this, wouldn't you stay there? I would think. I mean, because it's a literal city underground. Okay, so... The apes are saying the humans are raiding their crops. The humans have never been into this area. Where do the humans live? Have, do they go, go exploring? Are they just are they migratory? Com- are they complete savages that simply need an area to lay down and sleep? 
and they go eat and they make babies and they go and sleep. Is that all the humans in this world do? That's what it seems as like at this point. I mean, at that, and Nova being mute and being dummies. kind of dumb about things, you know, outside of suddenly knowing how to ride a horse. I, I'm going to say something, too, that no one else can say. I don't understand what I'm saying on the podcast, but it's very jarring when I look across and you're bearded now, Richard. <laughs> I keep looking across. I'm thinking I've got. Oh, it's a different person joining us. But Richard uh, has grown out his beard. I'm a, into a three week what, beard. It's the what's longest her name, I've ever Richard? Grown. <laughs> it's the longest I've ever grown a beard. So I wanted to see how gray it would be. It looks great, but it, it, it is jarring. It needs to fill in. What about thirty seconds into this minute? About the, at second twenty eight, we do get a nice change of shot in which we move to uh, <clears throat> kind of the right side of both uh, Brent and Nova as he is touching the water fountain itself. Uh, and I actually thought this was kind of nicely lit. I've noticed that Nova, mm -hmm. um, w we talked about this when she was down in the, um, the, the opening of the, the, the tubes and tunnels, she's really an attractive woman. And it feels like for this underground scene, they really cleaned her up a lot. She looks, well, I mean, it's, she's about to get a little bit more clean. Her but, hair's I mean, not messed up. Yeah, she, they did it. They did it. No dirt on her face. She's got a, like a light dusting of makeup. I mean, it's, it's so it. I actually have a note of that that is in the final moments of this minute <clears throat> that I'll jump ahead to about her hair. Again, she is a very lovely woman, and her hair is quite beautiful. And mm -hmm. whenever it goes to the moment in a little while while Brent is shoving her into the water, the back of it, her hair is like got that sheen that you want. It looks great. It didn't, it didn't look like a wig. Sometimes it, we were outside and it looked like a really bad wig. This just, exactly. <laughs> I, I'm a little surprised they don't dirty her up a little more and have matted hair and things like that because come on yeah I mean, they would be disgusting dirty people she, well she would well be doing hair care products i mean yeah. it, it, in all Shit fairness Perel. in all fairness and i have a note here later on as well with brent they're lighting him very well too so they yeah. both look like very attractive adam and eve-esque people in mm -hmm. this moment exploring this city so the water fountain is now on and brent decides to give it a try again and drink some water mm -hmm. so he cups his hands he he cups it under the, the dripping fountain itself, and he actually takes several drinks at a time of the water, and now that it's good water. But, I mean, this is still – I said drinking fountain earlier, but this is still a city fountain. This would not necessarily taste clean. Yeah, but comparatively. So that this is another great example of how film works in the rule of thirds. You use, you use thirds, whether that's in your visual storytelling, you frame things to one third or the other. You get the, the middle and the two sides, as well as conventions of storytelling. He's tried this is the third, third time. Yeah. So there it is once again that he tried, and on the third time it comes okay. And all good comedy comes in threes. Yeah. and That's so, why the water should have turned off right whenever he went for it. <laughs> that, well, oh, son of a bitch. Um, but to that point, comparatively, it tastes probably perfect. Compared, compared to the water to the, that was that was that still the still water that's that's that been sitting there for a little bit of while. Right. Yeah. I was about to say is it stalagmite or tight? Stalactite tight. hang tight to the ceiling. Yes. Stalagmites might one day reach the ceiling. I knew you'd be able to tell me that again. Yeah. But so he had that one and it was nasty water. He had the look like a potty that he drank from and that was <laughs> nasty. This one Anything's better than what he had before. So he, so he has like about three cups of water, three cup, hand, handfuls, cup, of cupfuls, water. Hand, cupfuls of water. He then motions to Nova to come over because she, she, does, she doesn't care either. I'm not She's thirsty. not thirsty. Whatever. He's like, come on, come on. She's like, oh, oh okay, okay. Oh, it was, it's just tea? so – her character is just so like passive. And I, where, I don't know how you can develop characters, characterization with a person like Nova. But there's got to be something they could do than just this infant that doesn't even know how to react to anything. I mean, she has to have something. And and it is funny watching these minute by minute. I never notice how she's passive. Just, she it's has not no even, agency. It's not even passive. She's stupid. <laughs> I like that the the way the fountain is structured. We have that giant molten lava that's surrounding the base of it. Mm -hmm. But clearly they've they've stuck the hose or whatever right you're using of it. just behind it so we never actually get to the opening of the hose whether it's coming from a, you know, a or cherub or or a, a, a seal or you know some right. wild some wild animal that's near the a fountain somebody's mouth somebody's so mouth is jar who, whoever's dicking with them is this their trap have they set this whole room up to be specifically this like that when it comes pot. well Think about it. You know, you've now we've got again, we've got somebody deep in the tubes. We all need water to survive. They know that they're doing something to draw you in because they didn't set this up just for Brent. Brent, Brent, no Brent, Brent, Brent is kind of looking confused by all of this. He is. He doesn't to be 
moments where he's kind of looking maybe a little bit away from the fountain, like he's looking around. Mm -hmm. At first, it looks like he's looking at the fountain, and at some point, he kind of looks like he's looking around, like making sure that they're safe. Um, so maybe there is that element. He's sus he's suspect of what's right. happening right now. I mean, I would be. Why is this water fountain suddenly coming on? Why is it clean enough water for me to drink? And they want me to drink now. 